Hi everybody. Uh, my name is Sherry Seligson. I am an apology author and we are coming back to talk today about um, some more marine science concepts. And I wanted to talk a little bit about something called drag. I mentioned it a little bit uh, yesterday and we did our video on sea turtles and we talked about how the uh, large leather uh, leatherback sea turtles, the leatherback sea turtles we talked about yesterday have um, ridges and grooves and so we're going to talk about that today. So I'm going to wait just a couple more minutes while people jump on um, and we will start talking about, uh, we're going to do a fun activity and then we're also going to make something today too. Um, so as people come in, uh, welcome. I hope you guys are doing really well with your um, just being at home and doing the things that we're having to do. Uh, some kids have started back to school virtually. And so this might just be something you could do extra if they're bored um, or if you're just wanting to incorporate this into, if you're homeschooling and you want to incorporate this into unit studies, I'm going to come up with ways that you can um, add to whatever we're talking about. If, you could, if there's a history element or um, a grammar element, writing element, something, vocabulary words, uh, there's all kinds of things you can do to um, expand a, a unit of study. And if you look back to our first week's worth of activities, um, I went over how you can make little lap books and take the things that you're learning and put them in to um, little tiny paper uh, lap books you can fold so that your students have something to look back on. So um, all of these videos I'm putting back up on my YouTube channel, which is Sherry Seligson, um, and the previous week's worth of, worth of work, we had a week last week here at Hip Home School Moms, and then also on my page the first week, uh, which is Sherry Seligson Author on Facebook. But all of them, including the ones here, are all up on my YouTube channel, so if you wanna look back on those as well. Um, so um, just to sum up again, today we're gonna do day two of some marine science, and I really think we're gonna do some fun stuff. Um, we wanna talk about drag. Ocean, uh, organisms in the ocean, have to maneuver through water. And water is a material that's hard to move through. It actually slows them down. And some organisms are able to swim uh, against the currents and against the flow of water, but many are not, and those are plankton. Plankton are organisms that cannot swim against the ocean currents or the movement of water. And so, and most plankton are microscopic. There are some large plankton. Um, jellyfish, for example, are a type of plankton because they cannot swim against the ocean's current. And so we wanna talk about some things that organisms have some features that their bodies have to prevent them from sinking because sinking is not a good thing. They wanna minimize or actually maximize their drag to keep them up in the water column longer. And a lot of plankton have extensions and feathery, feathery portions of their bodies to keep their, their sinking process slower. And so we're gonna do a fun experiment. I have a container that's clear and um, I tried to get one that was wide so we could drop a couple of things down simultaneously and we can see how they fall. Um, if, you, if you have something at home that's clear, uh, that's the best way to do it. A vase will work, but I tried doing it with a vase. I've got a vase right here and this one's kind of narrow to put more than one thing down because they're gonna bump into each other. So I think we're gonna try it with this one and see how well this works. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take um, some clay. You could use Play-Doh. Clay works a little bit better, but you could use Play-Doh if you wanted. And I'm going to um, just break off some small balls off of that. I want to get them about the same size. And you want to get four of them. So I've got two right here. And then I'm going to get two more. It's funny, we don't have kids at home anymore, but we still have clay, <laughs> modeling clay. But that's because I like to use it for science stuff. All right, so. Let's make sure I've got them about the same size. We want them to be the same size because we want all the parameters to be the same except for one feature that helps us to, um, to do our science. We're trying to minimize the, um, the variables. That's what it's called in scientific terms, except for the one variable we're testing. And so in this case, the one variable we're testing has to do with um, uh, shape or size, or shape, not size. So, Right now I have two um, little balls of clay. They're the same material, they're about the same size. And I'm going to take one, and, or one of them, and, and flatten it and make it kind of flattened into a coin shape. You can see that. So I have, a, I have my ball and I have my coin. So these are the same mass, okay? There's the same amount of stuff in them, but one, the, the only variable between these two is the shape. So this one, and we're gonna um, drop them and see which one 
takes longer to float down in the container. All right, so I'm gonna drop them at the same time. Ready? One, two, three. And I don't know if you can see that or not, but the flattened one kind of wafted back and forth as it went down. Now, last week when we did our um, paper airplanes and our air resistance, you saw something similar because air molecules are just like water molecules in that they're fluid, they move around. There's actually a mechanical engineering um, science of fluid engineering and it involves both gases as well as liquids because gases behave similarly. And so airplanes and, and airfoils, the wider apart they are, the, the, the easier it is for them to slow their fall, okay, in the same way a parachute does. And that we saw that with the water as well. So organisms that are wide or flat will kind of move in this direction as they go through the water rather than straight down. That keeps them up, higher up in the water so that they're more um, exposed to sunlight because most of these guys will photosynthesize, most of these planktonic organisms. And it also exposes them to a lot more water as they're traveling. They don't have to expend as much energy to move upwards in the water column. Okay, now the next thing we're gonna do is I've got two more um, pieces of clay. I'm gonna try a different thing. I've got some toothpicks and I'm gonna break my toothpicks in half. Now my toothpicks that I see here, I have here, have these little frills on them, and um, we're going to use those frills for our next drop. But for right now, I want just the plain ones. If you have plain toothpicks, um, do it with plain ones right now. So you want four half sizes of toothpicks. All right. So and I'll hold these up so you can see. So I've got my four toothpicks right there. You can see them, and I'm going to stick them in. My, uh, one of my two clay balls, kind of in a north, south, east, and west formation, making a plus sign. Then that'd be perfect. But what I'm trying to do is setting this up. Now this, these, this actually is an experiment that's in uh, my marine biology textbook, um, but it's a really fun one that we all can see and understand. You don't have to understand all the details behind it. But I have my sphere here, and I've got the same size sphere of um, clay on this side, but this one has some extensions. And so let's see what happens when an organism has extensions as it moves through the water. I'm holding them at the same height, and I'm gonna drop them at the same time. So minimize all our variables. The only variable we have is this one has extensions. Let's see what happens. One, two, three. Okay, it fell a little slower, not quite as slow as the one that went like this, it was flattened, but the extensions also help provide more drag, more resistance to the water because the water molecules, it has to move past those water molecules. All right, one last one we're gonna do. I'm gonna get two more globs of clay. This blue clay is turning my hands blue. Let's see, okay, I want them about the same size. Again. All right, and now, I'm going to take um, four more toothpicks. I want four plain half toothpicks and four frilled half toothpicks. So I'm getting plain again, just like the one we just dropped. Breaking them in half. And I'm gonna stick them in one of my two spheres, north, south, east, and west, making a plus sign. Okay, so I have this one, you can see that, okay? And then this one, I'm going to take the frilled end, these little cocktail, whatever they're called, fancy little toothpicks, and just use a half of one of those sticking out in four directions. Actually, this one's too short, let me get another one. You want them to be about the same in their extension. So, look at the frills on this one, on this one, versus the one that has extensions but no frills. And let's see if that makes a difference, if the frills make it even more um, like, or less likely to fall in the water, um, creating greater drag, let's see. That's my hypothesis, is I think the one with the frills will fall more slowly because it will create greater drag. Okay, here we go, we've got the same height, and we're gonna drop them one, two, three. And again, the one with the frills, 
fell more slowly through the water, which means it has greater drag than the one without the frills. And so actually organisms, they don't know they're doing this, but they do this. Their, their body features are designed in a way to help them stay up in the water column longer so they don't sink down into the ocean depths. So they stay close to the surface and are able to photosynthesize. Interestingly, here's a really fun fact for you. Um, if you, uh, the, the super powered photosynthesizers in the world are the tiny plankton that live in the oceans. Think about it, our oceans cover over three, almost three fourths of our um, world. So there's a lot of surface area exposed to the sun and there's hundreds of billions and billions and billions of plankton in that water that photosynthesizes, takes energy from the sun and makes food that other organisms eat as well. And so if we were to chop down all of the rainforests in our world, we would not have a problem with oxygen. We still have plenty of oxygen production because oxygen is produced as a byproduct of photosynthesis. Now, I'm not saying we should chop down all the forests. Don't quote me on that as, as the reason for that. We don't want to do that because it's a major ecosystem that is a very important part of our world. But um, this is one example of why these guys want to stay at the surface so they can stay um, exposed to the sunlight and photosynthesize. Okay, so that's kind of our, that was our uh, experiment for the day. I wanna do a little activity. Um, if you wanna pull some vocabulary words, obviously drag is a good one. Photosynthesis is a good one if you haven't done that one yet. Um, hydrodynamic is another one. Um, what hydro is, is with water. Um, those extensions, you can look at plankton. Look up plankton shapes, ocean plankton shapes. Copepods. C-O-P-E-P-O-D-S. Those are one kind of plankton, very popular, very common plankton that you can find um, different shapes and they have lots of extensions out of their body. Um, so anyway, that's something you can do. Now, we're gonna just do something fun. Because we were playing with the clay and I was thinking about Play-Doh, I thought it might be fun to do a really quick um, Play-Doh recipe that you guys can do with your kids. This is one that um, it's not my, I didn't make this up, but um, it's something that, um, is great because it's using what you have on hand most likely. Um, I'm going to use it basically the only ingredients you need are conditioner, hair conditioner, and um, cornstarch. That's it. Okay, and you're gonna eat, you're gonna mix them in equal parts. And this is a great way to use up those hair conditioners that you have from I don't know when you travel at a hotel and you have extra ones or something. And so I'm going to I'm actually let's see if I can take the lid off of this one. This will take too too long. I'm going to um, squirt out the conditioner into a measuring spoon I have here. And of course, conditioner doesn't flow very well. Let's see what we can do here. There we go. And, and the side effect of this is, a bonus, is that it's gonna smell nice when you're done. It's like a conditioner that smells good. Okay, I'll just get that was one. Use a little bit more here. Oh, it smells all bathtub in here. Okay, that's a word. You can see I've got not quite a full spoonful of this, and so I'm going to dump it out into my bowl. You can obviously make a lot more of this if you want. Um, I'm just gonna make a small amount so that we can do it at a more rapid pace so you guys can go and have fun on your own. Okay, so there's some about the same amount of cornstarch. And then I'm gonna mix it up. And eventually, I'll wanna just mold it with my hands. This is gonna make a really soft, fun texture of Play-Doh. Because of the nature of the cornstarch. Cornstarch is very fine, and it has um, a softer texture when it's mixed with stuff. I think I'm gonna want a little bit more cornstarch. Hmm. Don't breathe this. And then next, uh, tomorrow we're going to join back again. Um, I'm thinking we might change our time to three o'clock in the afternoon so more of you guys can join while we're live. 
going to keep adding until it gets a good consistency. That's probably good. So I'm going to put, actually I'll just use my hands. There's nothing toxic in this, which is another good thing. If you want, you could add, um, you could add some uh, food coloring to it. Okay, I'm kind of kneading it now. I'm gonna get a little bit more, I think, and then I'll be good to go. And there we go. All right, now it's nice and moldable. My hands are a mess. But you can see how you have a nice little, a very soft um, texture. And this is a fun Play-Doh thing you can do. I wonder if this would actually work in our clay dropping experiment. Let me take a look and see. It might be too lightweight, but I'm just gonna bring this back over. Let's just see if it falls in if I drop a pinch of it. Because then you could use this it falls, so that works too. So if you don't have clay at home, you can make your own Play-Doh with um, cornstarch and hair conditioner. And then you can, after you've played with it for a while, you can use it to do a fun experiment with your kids. Well, thanks for joining me. Um, we will come back again tomorrow and talk about some more marine stuff. I think we're gonna do dolphins tomorrow. Um, and we also are gonna spend a day and do sharks. Um, but we're going to do dolphins tomorrow and um, do some fun stuff about dolphins and come up with some fun activities to do as well. I hope you guys are enjoying this. Leave any comments um, to let me know what you think or any suggestions. And thanks for joining me.